Welcome back, this is MLOP Zoom Camp Module 6 and in this model we talk about best engineering practices. We covered a lot of things already, in the previous video we talked about git pre-commit hooks and in this video I want to talk about a tool that is called make and about make files. I guess I should call it make files and make. So if you are on Linux you already have make, so if I just do here make, hmm, interesting, I thought actually um, yeah, but you can see how to install it. Let me do this. I thought actually Make comes with Linux um, built-in. Uh, if you're on Mac, you probably also have it or need to install. For Windows, you can use to install Make the best, uh, the easiest way, at least this is how I installed Make, is to use a package manager called Choco. So just Choco install Make or something like this. But yeah, this is a super convenient tool and now I want to show you how to use it. So yeah, I have make now, so it says no target specified and no make files found. So we start by specifying a make file. So make file is a file that, that specifies. So using make, we can define sort of aliases. We can say make run and then it will make will go to the make file. It will find the run command and here it will execute whatever we have here. So for example, echo one, two, three. So now if we use this make run, then it will go there and execute. We can also define dependencies here. So for example, before running, we can test things. We can say that test depends on run or actually run depends on test. Right? And we can say that uh, we want to output test. We want to run tests here. So here we say that run depends on tests. So first we need to execute test and then we need to re execute run. So now if I do make run, you see first it executes test and then executes run. So it's kind of, maybe let me change it to uh, from one to three to run. So it's easier to follow what's happening. So it's kind of an orchestrator that uh, you can define a direct cyclic graph here. Uh, of dependencies and you can say that for example run can depend on uh, test or I don't know on uh, other thing right? and then you do echo other thing and then you can say that run depends on both test and other thing and when you do this both test and other things are executed before you run test. This is super convenient for example when you want to let's say we want to build an image and we want to publish this image to ECR, right? But before we do this, we want to run tests. So for example, we can have something like build here, build, and this build will depend on test and on integration test, or actually build will run, will depend on test and integration test, uh, test, right? And then we'll have integration test, which will depend on also test and we will have test. So in order to build, maybe also we can have some quality checks quality checks and this is something like I don't know uh, linting and all this isort and all whatnot so we can also have it here and maybe even the as the first thing and yeah here for example for quality checks what we can have is all these all these things so we can just put them into our quality checks and now when I do make quality checks. It, it actually does auto completion. So I do make you, I press tab and you see there is quality checks. And yeah, now it's just running all this isort, black and uh, pylint. Yeah. And if I do make test, so for tests, I will do pytest tests, right? So I can do make test and then we run tests now. For integration tests, we need to run I think integration test dot run so if I do now make integration test now yeah something is wrong ah yeah it first runs the test that's fine and then it cannot uh, I don't know what's wrong so let me just copy relative path and put it here and I do something like bash maybe it, it will work better So now it works. Yeah, now it is actually building. And actually this is well, this was something I wanted to include here in the build step. What I wanted to do here is uh, Docker Compose. Uh, so I wanted to put something like this here. 
and then we can also have something like publish which depends on build so if we want to publish we need to build the thing first and for that we will take the thing from here that we built and we will publish it so actually i can rearrange the code a little bit for example we want to let's not depend on the integration test here and we will make integration tests depend on build so integration tests depend on uh, build here these things we can put them outside this build thing so we can just put them here as parameters and uh, this way actually will work so if we do it like this we can use this local tag and local image and let me quickly show you what the problem is with this approach and then we will talk about how to fix it so i'll call this step test one for the lack of a better name and i'll just do a uh, local tag and then local image name and then i'll do this maybe yeah two times and i'll add sleep one so it will sleep it will do this sleep for one second and do the same thing again so it's test one and we'll make test one and you see what actually happens so so it doesn't put the variables it takes this thing and uses this as code so it kind of puts the content of this thing instead of executing this and then this thing is actually executed and then that's why we have uh, this is the tag and yeah this is the image name and we sleep for one second and luckily we have the same tag still but this is executed one more time so if we're unlucky and it's a different minute then it will be a different tag and for example the problem with this could be if uh, let's say we do build here we build this local name but then in the integration test when we evaluate this thing one more time it could be a different name already because build might take some time and yeah maybe it's even more apparent when we do it with when we add seconds now when with seconds i run it and yeah it should be capital s and with seconds when i run it yeah you see this is 53 and 54 right so this would be different name and different tag if we use second in the tag and to fix it we use this so like it's a different syntax we need to also say shell and then it will use shell to evaluate this command and now let me run this and see what happens so i just run this and you see now instead of putting the command and executing this it puts the actual value here because we add shell here it evaluates this thing in shell which in our case is bash and i think here yeah probably it doesn't matter much if we use this one or not let me try to see that it still works yeah I yeah, see that it actually has quotes here. I don't know if it's important or not. So let me see what happens if I remove them. Yeah, now the quotes are not added. Now, so this is how we actually parameterize. So I'll remove seconds here. And we don't need this anymore. But now it's safe to use this tag here. Because when we use it here, and I actually now want to use it here. So I want to say that local image name equals this one when we do bash uh, integration test um, because we will do the build here then we don't need to do it one more time and we can just say if this variable is defined when we run the script it means that the image name is already built so let's not build it so i'll go to integration test i'll open run and i'll do something like if yeah so this ifs in bash are always tricky so it's something like local image name so if it's equals to nothing then it's not defined then if it's not defined we can define it and run uh, the build i'll keep this outside here for example something like this else we don't need to do anything i'll just do I'll just print echo no need to build the local image name and here i'll write something like 
local user's name is not set, building a new image with tag this one. Perhaps we should add, we should say it here, something like this. I don't know if it will work, so we can actually try doing this right now. So, and we'll try using make file for this. So just go and it run integration test. So I'm going to make integration test. Something is wrong. Of course, because we when we were doing this in the integration test folder, we need to go one level up. But here we have the make file in the root. So we don't need to go one level up. We just do it in this directory. So let me run it one more time. So we are checking the code quality. I think this is yeah quality checks. So test passed and uh, now it's doing Docker build and it's running test and you see that no need to build uh, this one. And you see this is actually the comment that was passed and this is the same image with this is the same tag. And then we, uh, we passed this variable. So yeah, no need to build this image. Uh, maybe I'll say no need to build image. No. And yeah, we're running the integration test and everything is good. And now in this step in build, uh, in publish, so we can do something like uh, execute publish sh, which we don't have. Perhaps even we can create a folder, I'll call it scripts. And then in this folder, we can have a file publish sh, which will, um, I'll copy the shebang from here, and it will publish the image that we just built and tested to ECR. Uh, we will not actually publish it, so I'll say publishing image, and then this is the image name to ECR. And yeah, of course, we need in this make file we need to specify it to pass it so yeah let's pretend we want to publish something so make publish so we first run quality checks everything is fine then uh, we run uh, the tests then we run integration tests and of course i forgot i moved it to scripts folder so scripts publish yeah so we built i I think actually we, instead of just, uh, you know, relying on build, we should also run integration tests. So I will add this here. So before we publish, we want to run integration tests. So let me do it one more time. But yeah, I think you got the point. Yeah, now we are running the integration tests after we build the image. The integration test passed, so we can publish the image to ECR. So as you see, make files are quite useful. And instead of remembering all these commands, we can just open the make file, see what kind of commands or aliases or I don't know how this thing is actually called, what are the things that are defined there and just use them. A really good thing about this is that this auto completion, so you can just hit tab and see what is there and I can just make test and then run tests. Um, super convenient. Uh, I really love make files. I really like make. This is one of my favorite tools and uh, I hope you can appreciate the usefulness of this and start using it in your projects. Um, by the way, one thing that I wanted to mention here as well is our pre-commit hook. So remember that to use the pre-commit hook we need to do pre-commit install and this is something we might forget to do. So we can do something here like setup and we can this as a part of our setup uh, and install minus minus dev which will set up the dev environment and then it will run this one so now in our readme we can say just right here to prepare the project run make setup and then that's all you need to do to install these things and that's all you need to do to install to prepare the dev environment and you don't need to remember what exactly they did because it's all in the back. So I think that's all I wanted to cover here in this section. So we covered 
uh, mostly things related to code quality. So we looked at co uh, testing the code with unit tests, integration tests. Uh, we looked at how to test cloud services. We took a look at linting, formatting, and then uh, automating things by adding pre-commit hooks. And then we talked about make and make files. So that's all from me. There are still a few videos left, as you see. So this, in this, this video, Sejal will talk about creating staging production environments with Terraform and then running things we uh, looked at here in, this, in these parts with GitHub Actions. So see you soon.